praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is your program, Living by the Word. And of course, I'm yours truly, Pastor Eloise Hines of Destiny Empowerment Global Ministry. Let me welcome you to another uh, time of Living by the Word, where we encourage you really to apply the Word of God to everything that you are doing. Amen. Because the Word of God is the, the, the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And as I delve more and more into the word, I realize how true those instructions are that we have answers, direction, and all that we need in the word of God. So we want to let you know, of course, we are um, currently using the Shaw Park Complex. We are there on Sundays from 9 a.m., tremendous time of the word, worship and testimonies of what God is doing in the midst of us. On Tuesdays, we are on Zoom for our Bible study. We are in the book of Ephesians. And of course, we have our prayer time and our youth meeting Fridays, um, 5.30 and 6.30 at the Lambeau Multipurpose Center. So that's what's happening with us. And there are a lot of other exciting things that God is doing with us. We have persons, you're going to probably be hearing about that dance ministry doing um, worship and unity in worship part two and you're going to be hearing some other things coming up i know we have in-house training uh, ministers training i do not know why i'm saying it here but maybe there's somebody that just has a desire to get a little deeper in god we're going to be going in-house three months of intense training and discipleship for persons that we see god is raising up in the midst of us so yes god is at work with us doing great things in us affecting those around us amen father we thank you for your people we bless them and we declare them blessed in jesus name amen i started last week talking about what's wrong with the church and i want to continue and bring that to a close today what is wrong with the church the passage of scripture is matthew chapter 17 where jesus is on the mount of transfiguration and he is there Elijah appears with to him, also Moses, and of course, Matthew, um, Peter, James, and John are there with him. And uh, I'm going to jump to verse number 20, uh, 14, when they come down from the mount. They said, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic. <laughs> And so vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. And this is where we are going. For those of you who saw the program last time, this is where we are going. Yes, where this man has a son. He said, my son, this father is coming to the disciples of Jesus. Yes, and he has brought his son who has an, a problem who has a sickness or a disease, uh, epilepsy, and he's getting into seizures uh, and all of that. And he said he is so vexed, he's falling into the fire and into the water. He says in verse number 16, I brought him to your disciples. And, and the question is, why would that man bring his son with this problem to the disciples? It's obviously because he would have heard that they have some kind of solution that they can offer to his son. Maybe I am just putting my own interpretations here and saying that maybe this was not the first um, solution that he explored. Because the Bible tells us in Mark that this is something he has had from a child. That this is a situation that has been tormenting this family. And I say family because when one person in the family is affected, the whole family is affected. And that is how the enemy is wicked. The enemy knows that if he can just get to one person in your household, your entire equilibrium in that family is messed up. My God, who am I talking to? The enemy knows if he can just, ah, oh my God, afflict one member in your household, it's going to cause you to be in turmoil. It's going to cause you to function from a place of unrest. The enemy knows that if he can just get at your son or get at your daughter, 
then that is going to throw you off your assignment because now you are concerned about what's happening with your child. The enemy knows how to come in and afflict our children. Uh, my God, and you see parents now have to stand up uh, and fight for their children. I remember the Lord was speaking to us uh, the last time we had a youth encounter night uh, and God brought all the young people together and there was such a powerful anointing in that place and the Lord began speaking and saying that there are children fighting battles that adults and parents should be fighting for them. And the Lord showed me in scripture where when Jesus was born and Herod wanted to kill him that the angel of, of the Lord came to Joseph and in a dream warned him to escape with his son and with his wife. Come on. To escape into Egypt. And, and I'm saying that and I told the adults, I said because our children, they have destiny upon their lives. They have purpose to accomplish in the earth. And we have to fight off every Herod until they are at a place where they can fight for themselves. This man is coming to Jesus and his son is afflicted. Ah, oh God, the enemy has afflicted the son. And now the father is coming to get help for the son. He says to this Jesus, he says, I brought him, they could not help. And I said last time that this is the end, this is the indictment against the church today. That my God, we profess to have a God who can do all things. We profess to have a God of the impossible. We profess to have a God with whom nothing is impossible with this God. And when Persons are coming, my God, to the representatives, the disciples, the followers of Jesus to tap into that which we have announced to them. They don't get any results. This was the man's situation. Jesus responded in verse number 17. He said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. How, excuse, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? He says, bring him hither to me. And Jesus' response, this, this, you could almost get the, the frustration of Jesus. You almost hear Jesus saying, come on, why do I still have to deal with these matters when you all should be able to handle it? There was an expectation on Jesus' part that his disciples should have been able to handle this. Is that what God is looking at his church? And saying, come on church, how long are you going to call and ask me to do what I have empowered you to do? How long you hear the frustration of Jesus saying by now, when you hear somebody say to you, how long do I have to do it? It means that they have extended a grace. They have found themselves in a situation of dealing with a matter longer than is expected or required. Jesus said, how long am I going to be doing this? What he's saying is by now, I should not have to handle this. You all should be able to handle this. And I'm saying to your church of the living God, by now, my God, my, uh, by now there are some things we are supposed to have been able to handle that we are not handling. Uh, what's wrong with the church? Jesus said there, there's a perverse means they have gone contrary to the truth of what we're supposed to be following. And he says, you're a faithless generation. I realize that a lot of things that we are doing in the church has nothing to do with faith. Don't get me wrong. Let me tell you this. There are a lot of things that we can do in this life that has nothing to do with faith in God. There is a lot we can get up, get dressed, go to work, go to a church service. We can drive our cars. We can do transactions in the groceries. We can fly all over the world. And a lot of it has nothing to do with trusting and putting our confidence in God. Jesus said the problem is that there are faithless and a perverse generation. Oh my God, is, that, is God saying that about us? 
And the Bible says in verse number 18, Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. What the disciples could not do. And I imagine that if it were us, we would have been rebuking and shaking and speaking and getting the right songs. You know, like you see happen in certain places. We start to sing the blood choruses. We start to pour oil. We start to throw water. We start to form a circle. We start to speak in tongues and we do a lot of shandora baba mama. we do all of those things and nothing happens jesus said the problem is that you lack faith and jesus comes along and shows them how it should be done and just by speaking the word i want to get into that another time jesus charged him the devil he says he rebuked him in fact mark says he says i command you to come out Jesus just spoke. And what I'm saying to us, my God, that the same ability, the same power that is in Jesus to cast out devils, my God, to, to override the forces of darkness, it is the same power that is in the church today. Hear me good. <laughs> That same power we saw Jesus operating in, my God, to do what he was doing when he was in the earth. It is the same power that Jesus has put in the church today. Jesus told his disciples in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he says, behold, I have given you power. Not will, I have given. When he sent them out, you would check the scriptures and you realize in Luke chapter 9, he's, when he sent out his disciples, he gave them power. In Luke chapter 10, when he sent out the 70, he gave them power. You recognize when Matthew records in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1, he gave them power. Jesus does not send his disciples out uh, to engage the forces of darkness without power. He does not do it because we have a real spiritual battle to fight and that battle cannot be fought with words and shakes and blood songs alone. It takes power. I am saying that to you. Jesus said in Matthew 12 that when a strong man guards his house, his goods are safe. But when a stronger strong man comes, he takes away the armor in which he trusts. A stronger strong man has to come to stand against and overpower the forces of darkness that have some people like this son in oppression. Jesus said, come out. And in one instant, he was cured. In Mark chapter 16, as he was getting ready to leave his disciples, he says, these signs shall follow them that believe. He says, go and preach the gospel. Who he believes shall be saved and signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall do this. They shall do. Jesus has given the church the power. And then he told his disciples in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, he says, wait till you be endued with power from on high. They were there with him. They had gone out and seen Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He says, I'm telling you, don't go out till you be endued or clothed or receive an enablement from God to do what I've called you to do. In, Matthew, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus told them, Ah, God, and you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. You shall not not only receive shakes, he says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So those of us who speak in tongues, bless God. Those of us who, who, who have all the gifts, bless God. But he says the Holy Ghost coming is power to witness. Not to do witnessing, but to be 
witnesses to become the solution. My God, and the Holy Spirit quickened me as I was sitting down meditating. He says, oftentimes we point people to Jesus, but we are the solution. We are the disciples. We are Christ's representative. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 that we are ambassadors and God is making his appeal through us, calling men to be reconciled to God. We are the representatives. When they see us, they must see Christ. They must see what the kingdom of God is like. That is what they must see. We must be that solution. That's why in Acts chapter 3, Peter and John, they are going to the temple to pray. My God. And they meet a man that is laid there. He's lame from birth. He had to be carried. And he is begging oh God for an arms. And they looked at him. And they said, look, look on us. And he looked as if to receive something. And he said, silver and gold we do not have. But he says, such that we have, we give unto you. He says, what we have. He didn't say, hey, Jesus, come and fix this. They never tell Jesus, come and do it. He said, we don't have silver and gold, but what we have, we will give unto you. Church, what do we have? Church, we don't know what we have. That is the problem with the church. Ah, oh my God, you know, I see so many foolish things happening in the gathering of God's people. So many antics and so many games and so many fooling around in the body of Christ when the church gathers. And I'm saying to myself, the problem with the church is that the church does not know what we have. My God, <laughs> hey, if you understand, according to Romans chapter 8, 1 and 2, if the church understands that we have the same spirit in us that raised Christ from the dead, we have raising from the dead power inside of us. I am telling you, our gatherings will be different. Because the, the kinds of things we are seeing happening is because we don't know the power we have in us as a church. We don't understand that the spirit of God that is in us is the spirit of power because the kingdom of God is power. That's the problem with the church. When you're hearing all these things and seeing all these foolishness happening and, and, and I don't even want to start mentioning them is because I say we don't know the power. If you understand, my God, you are carrying a nuclear, my God, an intercontinental, let's say ballistic kind of weaponry. If you understand you are sitting on something like a nuclear weapon. If you understand that you are carrying something like that with you, you would not play games. My God, you will get ready to attack every force that's coming against you. You will be ready to tell every enemy, try me now. <laughs> You'll be ready to say, hey, you're walking with boldness and confidence because you know the kind of power that's backing you. God says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He says, in my name, these are things that will happen. But we are not seeing that a lot of times because we have just brought the church gathering into, you know, let's come and sing a few songs and let's just praise. And we don't like the worship leader for this week. And I prefer that worship leader. And I didn't like this sermon. I like when this one preached. I like this pastor. I like this minister. I didn't like this church. I didn't like, this is how we do. And we are lauded. Carriers of the very power that raised Christ from the dead. Because that is who is living in us if you are born again. And we don't know. So we go through the motions and we see people having discourse in the church. And the arguments about all because we don't know what we have. That's the problem with the church. We don't know who we have. We don't understand the role of the Holy Spirit with us that we have raising from the dead power every time we gather with us. That's what Romans 8 says. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelling in us. 
My God, Jesus said, my God, he says, hallelujah. I've just, I've just gone way off on what I'm talking today, but let the Lord have his way. People are coming to the church with all kinds of situation and the church does not have the response to give. May God help us. The, what I like with them is that when after they were done, they said, verse number 19, they came to the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could we not cast him out? Church, we don't even have to recognize one, but we need to be able to assess and say, why did we not handle that situation? How come we did not provide a solution for that problem? That's the only way we will get better. Church, we have to come to a place not to say, well, that's just the will of God. Let them go sick. Ah, God, we have persons sometimes, as I was hearing in a particular space, that the, the sister... She took sick and she died. And you know, instead of coming back together and saying, well, church, why could we not minister healing to her? All we did is that blame, we blame the medical fraternity. And we say, no, what the hospital should have did, the doctor should, but why could we not cure that person? Some people are saying that is for the apostles and the early church. I beg to differ. God is not going to give us the same raising from the dead Holy Ghost power for us to sit down and clap. My God, come on somebody. You got raising from the dead power in you. We got demons coming at our children, attacking the nation. Look at the blood shed in Trinidad and Tobago. And God has just put his church here to with power to clap and to speak in tongues, and to fall down. God has given us the raising from the dead power to be solution to the problems we're seeing around us. Amen, somebody. And that power in us would not be activated unless we first recognize that there is something wrong with what we are doing and begin to cry to God and ask God in our local assemblies and our gatherings, God! What is wrong with us? Why could we not do the things we are supposed to do? Or persons who are needing help are coming us to us to get help. Why could we not help? If we bury our head in the sand, we will never be a solution to the problems around us. And that has been one of my prayer. God, make us solutions for the problems. Because there is no problem on earth for which heaven does not have a solution. Hear me, there is no problem on earth for which heaven does not have a solution. It has a solution. God has a solution. We just got to tap in. Sometimes we got to wait before God and say, God, what is the solution? How do we handle this? And as you begin to do that, the Holy Spirit releases answers, releases direction. The, he releases the gifts in the church. So you get a word of knowledge. You get a prophetic word. My God, you get a word of wisdom. Somebody comes with the gift of healing or the gift of faith. And the gifts are there for us to find solutions to build a body. The man comes unless it is that we have no sick people coming to the church looking for help. We have no demon-possessed person coming to the church unless we have no problems that people are coming to the church that we don't have to worry about the Holy Spirit. But once we have these problems in the church and in the world, God is expecting that the power that he has given to the church will be operational to handle these situations. That's how God gets the glory. That's how God gets the glory. My God, and as Jesus said to them, why could we not cast them out? Verse 20, Jesus said, because of your unbelief, not because of your inability. Do you know it is possible for, for you to be able to do something and not believe that you can do it? It's like sometimes at school, you know, you give children a, a math problem or an English problem or a science problem and they, they begin to doubt that they can do it. And it's only after they've tried and realized, hey, I succeeded. But the ability was always there. 
The capacity was always there. What was the problem was the lack of faith. Jesus looked at them and said, not that you can't do it, but you doubt that you can do it. It's two different things. Church, I'm saying to you today, it's not that we can't handle the problems and the situations coming to us. It's that we don't believe that we can. We don't believe it. Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, because a very little measure of faith, he said, even as small as a mustard seed will be potent to move mountains. And that expression speaks of dealing with what seems impossible. My God, he says, because if you have faith as small as a grain of mustard seed, you shall be able to say to the mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Jesus said a small measure of faith is potent, is powerful. And he says, you and I need to say to the mountain, not ask him to come and speak. Not ask him to deal with the mountains. He said, you and I. He says, if you got faith and don't doubt, even as small as a mustard seed, then we can speak to impossible situations and tell those impossible situations what is supposed to happen and it will happen. I am saying to us, church, we have the power in us. The problem with the church is that we don't know we have this power. So we don't use this power. We don't let this power work in us and through us. My God, to affect those around us. And therefore, we are impotent to help. I am saying to you, church of the living God, it's time we arise. Begin to read the scripture. Begin to talk to God. Because what I'm telling you, I'm telling myself. My God, I'm telling myself as well. I said this gospel must be preached with power. I'm saying like Paul, the kingdom of God is not talk. It's too much talk. It's time for action. Ah, oh God, I begin to see God work. I begin to see the Holy Ghost work. Because I'm saying to you that we are co-laborers together with God. What does that mean? That even as we pray and we lay hands, is the Holy Spirit who does that work. Ah, uh, God is the Holy Spirit who brings that thing to pass. You know, this week I was having a bad headache. And when I have bad headaches, I normally take a Panadol, I take medication because it is so like, like you know, migraine. And I said, Gil, you have to put this thing that you're preaching to others to the test. And I began to speak to this pain to go. I said, God, I must have a testimony to talk about. I began to command this pain to go. I said, in the name of Jesus, ah, your word tells us, God, by your stripes we are healed. And you said you wish above all things that we will be in good health. And I command the pain to go. And I just felt the pain. Little by little by little, and it just went. Something that normally will trouble me and I would take medication. I said, this time I'm putting this thing, I'm exercising the power that is in me. And just like that, in a matter of five minutes, the pain was gone. And I continued to see testimonies in my life. Maybe some other time I will share it with you. But I thank God that he is alive, that his word is true. And God has given us the power to deal with the situations that's happening around us. Church, we need to know where that power is. We need to tap in that power and we need to let that power work in and through us for the glory of God. This is all the time we have for living by the word. I wanna encourage you to live the word, to love the word, to learn the word. Till next time, stay strong. God bless you. Bye-bye.